All right. Well, it's been a minute. Welcome to Unmuted Nation Raw. Uh, and uh, I am glad to kind of be here to talk about everything that's gone on over the last few weeks. Uh, we, we've all felt like in some way, shape or form that 2020 is just crazy. Um, I am uh, leaning towards the truth that everything's been crazy for a while and this is the culmination of all of that. So instead of doing a muted nation in the regular format, the way that you're used to uh, with me live Monday through Friday at 1 PM, which, you know, I'm still there. Uh, we've decided to kind of go unplugged and instead of the formal uh, format interview cabinet, all of that will be there, but we all need a drink every day. Uh, or if, if drinking is not your thing, um, and you're more herbal, whatever you need, we're, we, we, we are all coping in some way. Um, it's like we are not just in a, inside of a reality show, but a, a, a part of um, the planning production. We see everything kind of come together and as it's supposed to air, it's still a failure. And um, of course, my partner in crime, Tiff Linnell from Tiff Talks, also here at Boss FM is here to kind of unpack what's been going on, uh, how things have been going on, um, how we're dealing with all of this. And we got a lot to talk about tonight, like a lot. We're going to talk about it tonight and then we're going to be raw in every single way. So um, we're going to get to the point of where we will actually probably open the phone lines for uh, <laughs> for this, for you guys to get in um, on this conversation. And we're, we're working on that for now. You can follow the conversation on Twitter. Use the hashtag Unmuted Nation. If you want to talk to us specifically, tweet us at Unmuted Nation, um, and and we'll do that. Uh, so much to just tip. First of all, tip how how are how are you? Present and accounted for, and in need of my beverage because I didn't have time to go downstairs and get mine. Well, I will make time for you to do that as I kind of run down. I'm not going to give everything away, but we are going to talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to hit tonight. Um, first of all, happy Indigenous Peoples Day. And it's important that I say that to people that live in this country. Those of you that were here um, in this country and we came, well, not we, but they came and took your country. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how this country doesn't even want to acknowledge that. Uh, and the, the pain that kind of goes into, I think there's such a deeply rooted pain that people experience uh, and it's, it's understandable if you don't get the pain, right? If you feel like um, the number of, of, of people, and I, I'll say this candidly, like this is raw, so I, I'm probably going to go there, not really intentionally, but to, ship, to tell you that um, the Black people that you know don't tell you the truth, right? You, especially you white people that say, or you other people uh, that don't want to see sy systemic racism and, and systematic racism and these systems at work. And you're like, well, I have a black friend. I have a black granddaughter. I have a black cousin. Um, they don't have time to explain to you why you don't understand. And if it's something you've never experienced, you're not going to understand it. Um, I think when it comes to Christopher Columbus, and we're definitely going to go here. I, I want Tiff to, to have her drink. And if you're here at the Nation Raw, I want you to kick back. Like this is this is uh, I'm gonna bring people into the raw experience for you to kind of feel. But I am a, a little uh, I can't be polished in the things that need to be said right now. And I think it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. I think um, if you have followed my broadcasting at all i think even for you i will be a little bit out of the box whether you were with me in the daily show uh, or the shake up or wherever you kind of came uh, and or maybe you're, you're not maybe this is your first time and you're like i don't even know who this black man is um you know i i think this conversation is just for you if you're somebody that you know what you we've had some type of working together or uh, you grew up, I make it no secret that I grew up in a very black city in a very predominantly white area. And so the experiences there um, were different, uh, but I lived my life as a black man. And so I think that, that those experiences uh, hold more weight. My experience and understanding of people is more wide and more vast 
But that goes back to the issue of, um, you know, white people thinking that black people that grew up in those areas, we are different blacks, we're not. Uh, when you think that um, just because we don't express all of the pain to you or share these experiences with you, we're not different. We've just experienced it in a different way. If you know that we were treated differently because we lived around you and had the money and the means, just like you did, you are also part of the problem when a black person tells you or a person of color, brown body, tells you that there's something wrong. Um, so we'll talk about Indigenous People Day. Uh, a lot of people are Indigenous peoples, however you want to say it. Um, a lot of people are celebrating that today instead of Columbus. I don't think Columbus should really be celebrated with what we know about him. And that's another problem that we've had in the country that I can't really get raw and talk to you about all the time. We don't want to um, diminish, and, and the current administration has a huge problem with the truth. And so they're more comfortable with the truth. And that is literally the history of, well, we'll, we'll go there in a minute. Um, also, we'll talk about this being the first day of early voting in a lot of areas. Uh, voter suppression. And one of those things, again, that people say, oh, well, this is not 1955. That's not happening. It really is happening. And it's now happening in plain sight. If there's something that's happened in the last five years is that people are more enabled and ready and able to exploit pu in, in, in public. And because bigotry is widely accepted and people are called snowflakes, or um, called insensitive because they don't want to tap into that, uh, a lot of this bigotry goes unchecked. And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that as well. Uh, we'll talk about Jamie Harrison in South Carolina. For those of you in South Carolina, it's important that you are engaged in this race. Um, Kanye West, the things that I want to say about him, even raw, I probably can't, but we'll talk about it. Um, I will talk about Trump's COVID fiasco from my perspective. Um, those, so many, many people don't believe that he got it. A lot of people think he's a stunt queen. Um, he is, but we'll talk about that. And also uh, a, a black owned digital bank that is available for you. I also wanna talk about, um, we, we're gonna start with some comedy and we're also gonna talk about some things that like, really. So uh, if I got to step back. Okay, she's still making her drink. That is okay. Oh, she's back. <laughs> what you got? Come here. Um, you, you know what? I've been wine, you know, for the last seven days. I'm, I'm actually getting, I'm getting too old and away from um, the hard liquor as, as, yeah. as much. Yeah. However, uh, I do think that it's justified in more ways than one. Now I get that. I do understand. And that I, I, I will justify people that have decided to have a cocktail or two daily. Um, I think I, we need it in this moment. Any kind of beverage, herbal remedy, uh, if you will, whatever is required to get through these tedious times. I don't have my herbs with me in here, but I have them. You got to do <laughs> Okay, so I really wanted to talk about Indigenous People Day and um, Columbus. And I want to start with um, why people want to hold on to this lie. So how do we even attack, like, how do we approach, like, it's a lie, okay? We were all oh, sold this lie. There were, he did not discover anything. Christopher Columbus sailed in 1492? No. He did sail. But hey, he didn't even know where the hell he was. He didn't know where he didn't. was going. Didn't. And he didn't acknowledge that people were already there. Mm. Right. He. It, what bothers me about trying to celebrate this rapist is that he was a rapist. He raped, pillaged, murdered, destroyed lands and people in the land that he quote unquote discovered, did not discover because he was lost. And you want to celebrate this horrible man? I'm sorry, I just, I, I, there's nothing right about that in my mind. And I think that to call it revisionist history 
And I'm sure we'll go, we can go over that in a minute if we really want to. But to call the atrocity that this man committed and that the people who came with him committed revisionist history is just a bold lie. And if that is what you consider making America great again, you can actually count me out of that. Because that that it's not, we're doing a, a bad enough job, 27th in education. I'm going to keep repeating that until we start moving up the chain. We are 27th in the world in education. And if we begin to move back into the pattern that still exists, that we're still already battling today, of giving this revisionist history of how America was discovered with this man who was a rapist who got lost and happened upon South America, then we're going to get even lower on the food chain education wise. And we simply can't, we can't afford that. We're low enough. So I think to call it revisionist history, to sign a resolution, to celebrate this man, to say that he was a wonderful Italian American is a political move at its best and traumatizing at worst. Um, so I, I think we have to do everything that we can to try and combat this narrative because it's a lie. It's false and it's a lie. And our history books are already touting this lie. We don't need to increase it even more than it already exists. But you know how I feel about education in this country. I think when you say that we are 27th in education, I think people don't know what the hell you're talking about. We suck. <laughs> I mean, that is to say, well, the schools in my neighborhood are good. That's great, right? But if your state is number like 16 in the grand United States, then you're number 16 in a country that's number 27. Period. And what that means, what that looks like on a, a scale is the books, again, have inaccuracies in them. We only talk about Martin Luther King and Jr. and Rosa Parks during Black History Month. We don't talk about Ida B. Wells. We don't talk about W.B. Du Bois. We don't talk about Booker T. Washington for the assimilation that he assimilated. So, I mean, but based on what you just said, though, you're, the assumption is that people would have is that uh, we are 27th because we don't talk about Black people. No, we're 27th because we don't have equality in education. We're 27th because we don't have resources in education. We're 27th because we still have children who can't have, who don't have access to good internet to even get onto class right now in the middle of a pandemic, which is part of the reason our government keeps trying to tout that we need to go back to in-person learning. I have Can I jump in for a second? I want to jump in for a second. We're also 27th because we lie. OK, this country lies about everything. They lie to you about everything. They lie, 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 lie. And we we elect liars. We listen to liars. And I'm starting to believe that Americans are comfortable with liars because they take their asses to church and get lied to. They take their asses to work and get lied to. And they go home and watch TV and get lied to. Right. And I think that there's so much truth out there, which I really think that like Part of us being in this era of misinformation is really it's there is a referendum on the truth, like a referendum on the truth. Now, that's a word. And I really think that it extends beyond just education. It, it's within the bloodline of this country. Um, there is a referendum on truth as it stands with. Um, you know, in school, we're talking about reception history and how the Bible has been used to propagate uh, slavery and to promote slavery and to explain and, and basically justify slavery. This country is built on the blood, sweat and tears of indigenous peoples, of, an of African ancestors. And to ignore that history is a bold lie. There are many other countries that aren't 27th in education that have accepted their narratives of negative, traumatic, trying events and circumstances and situations. They're not all perfect, but at the end of the day, other countries are kicking our asses in education. Our teachers aren't paid enough. We don't have the, the number of teachers that are applying to be teachers is has decreased over the last few years. So schools are literally desperate for uh, for teachers to come in. But why would I come in when you make me pay for the supplies in my own classroom and you're not even paying me enough to do that? Um, to, uh, 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 to to add to what you're saying, I had to put my glasses on because I, I, we, we got we to gotta talk about um, the lies. But I think to add to what you're saying, teachers on average pay 
$15,000 in taxes a year on salaries that are usually at $50,000 or below, while the President of the United States pay, pays less than $750 on the two years that he paid under t out of 10 years, right? <clears throat> and while people, he tells himself is just being smart, uh, he, that's what he said to Hillary Clinton on the debate stage in 2016 when she called his ass on, on not paying taxes. But you, the American, you should be upset because I know that some of you raise your, uh, your um, what is it, the deductions. And I know that you lift them up to 15 for half the year and bring them back down so you don't pay as much. Like, you paying taxes out the ass and this man ain't paying at all. I, I, I think that we have been fed lies for so long, we don't really know the difference, right? I think that um, when Alexa has to ask me questions like uh, ask me what a hypothesis is and, and, and kids aren't learning that in, anymore, what? Um, I, I just think we, we've kind of lost our way. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you that. Yeah. Alexa asked me to ask her what it was. Oh, you did but, tell me yeah, and, you did I, I mean, I had to state my hypothesis at least like seven out of the 13 years that I was in, 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 in school, right? Underline um, it. I like it. But I want to talk about the White House because we got so much to talk about today. But for those of you that are still like, oh, well, I don't understand, you know, how many times do you want Donald Trump to denounce white supremacy? I, I, I get asked that question all the time. It should be denounced every time it comes up, right? If you see that white supremacy is butting its head and it's infiltrated everything. A lot of no, a black person can't be a, a black or a white supremacist, but black people perpetuate and um, actually embody the ideas and the characteristics of white supremacy when the, with their assumptions that white supremacists put on society. I'm not going to stay there. I want to talk about Columbus. The White House issued a proclamation today. Probably you weren't paying attention. I know that you weren't watching the Senate confirmation hearing, and that's great. If you had today off, you had Indi Indigenous People Day off, that's great. This proclamation was issued by the White House, uh, the Trump White House, uh, it was actually issued on October 9th. So it was done, something there, you know, smoke screen, Donald Trump okay. has COVID, yeah. nobody's paying attention. But as we, if you don't know the lie of Christopher Columbus and you still believe it and you sing the little song with your kids because you think it's cute, this is what they had to say. I'm going to try to paraphrase because we don't have time to read all of this BS. Uh, but we will share it on the Unmuted Nation Facebook page and Twitter account if you want to read it. Uh, they, he they start off talking about more than 500 years ago, Christopher Columbus's intrepid voyage to the New World ushered in a new era of exploitation and discovery. His travels led to European contact with Americas uh, and a century later, the first settlements on the shores of the modern day United States. First settlements, okay. Like there weren't settlements here. Today we celebrate Columbus Day to commemorate the great Italian who opened a new chapter in world history and to appreciate his enduring significance to the Western hemisphere. If you ever wonder how white people put themselves back in front of everybody else, this is exactly how it happens. White people, you should really be upset about that because you've also been fed lies. You have not been in front or discovering, or you did not discover everything. You didn't make everything. You aren't the leaders of everything. You actually fell behind and, and, and or you just took and you just stole and you just killed. And you, all right. Um, anyway, they talk about, you know, all the, the BS that they fed us, but I want to hone in on this this line right here. Today, the United States benefits from the warmth and generosity of nearly 17 million Italian Americans whose love of family and country strengthen the fabric of our nation. I think that's lovely. I love Italians. Um, I, I do. For our beautiful Italian American communities and Americans of every background, Columbus remains a legendary figure. So, what about the people that he raped? What about the people that he killed? What about the land? But here, you're like, okay, Alex, get to the point. Where is the attack? It's right here. Sadly, in recent years, radical activists have sought to undermine Christopher Columbus's legacy. These extremists, you and I, seek to replace discussion of his vast contributions with talk of failings, his discoveries with atrocities, and his achievements with transgressions. That's a beautiful way to say trans he had some transgressions. He killed people and raped them. 
Rather than learn from our history, this radical ideology and its adherents seek to revise it, deprive it of any splendor and mark it as inherently sinister. It's actually all of those things. All of those things precisely, exactly, bigly. It's literally, I would use all of those words. Every word that is listed, yes. And then some. There was no splendor. None. And it was definitely inherently sinister. Absolutely. They seek to squash any dissent with, uh, from their orthodoxy. We must not give in. Watch these words. This is in a White House proclamation attacking truth, attacking history. And I know it's people like me and Tiff that sit and read this. And I'm telling you that you need to know that this is happening in your face. They right. released this proclamation from the White House. We must not give in to these tactics or consent to such a bleak view of our history. That it really diminishes 400 years of hurt and pain that you inflicted on people that you brought here and that were already here. Like it didn't just happen to the slaves that were brought, but the people that were already here. We must not give in to these tactics or consent to such a bleak view of our history. We must teach future generations about our storied heritage, starting with the protection of monuments of our intrepid heroes like Columbus. That is KKK language. That is Confederacy language. And being that I'm living in a state of the Confederacy, that is Confederacy language on whitehouse.gov as a proclamation. This is not a game. This is not a drill. This is white supremacy language literally being signed into a proclamation to celebrate a rapist. He was a rapist. There's no getting around that. This man was evil. He did evil things. And further, right, while some of the same things can be said about the forefathers, we're not talking about them right now. Right. While some of those same things can be said and are said about the forefathers of this country. Columbus was not one of those. Right. However, as they go on, we must teach future. Anyway, this June, I signed an executive order to ensure that any person or group destroying or vandalizing a federal monument, memorial or statue is prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Now, one thing I will tell you as a black man, I'm not encouraging anybody to go uh, gang down none of these white people shit. Like, don't touch their shit. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I don't believe in destroying it or vandalizing it. And not actually, while black while white people have accosted Black the Black Lives Matter movement and, and trying to advocate for us, and they get reckless and they tear shit down, like we not, that's not what we do. We okay. However, if we did, we learned it from you. Trump says I have also taken steps to ensure that we preserve our nation's history and promote patriotic education. In July, I signed another executive order to build and rebuild monuments to iconic American figures in a national garden of American heroes. I wonder, oh, never mind. Um, yeah, that language alone, I'm gonna leave this proclamation alone. I do want you to read it. And if you're somebody that reads it, I want you to share your real thoughts with me. If you read it and you're like, Alex, I think you're being an extremist. I don't think it's that bad. I think that we can explore all part, uh, parts of history. Maybe I'm taking it too far. Let me know. Drop us a comment. Send me an email. Hit us on Unmuted Nation. I want to know. We'll talk about that a little bit more. I can. In the interest of time, I want to sit here and, and drag this White House. Uh, I, there's no need to drag Columbus. He dragged enough of us. Uh, but I, Literally. You know, I do want to jump to um, uh, early voting for a second. And um, but before this, we, we paused. We used to do a segment on this show. We stopped doing it because there's just way too many of them. But we have a video of a Karen um, that uh, as we talk about voting, I want to share this video because I think it is appropriate to discuss the misuse of this language. Um, and why it's important for you to get your ass up and vote. Okay. Um, let's let's look at our, our common Karen. There is no one in the store. There's me in the store. There's you. So you stand 7,000 feet away from me. Ma'am, I'm just trying okay. and to I, do and my I'm job. Here, and I'm trying to make sure that I have rights. So you're going to hear that they're actually going, you'll, you'll make sure to hear that in the end, you're the one who will be cited, not me. Okay, fine. So, yep, I'll just stand right here because I'm here. I've driven 20 minutes out. I'll drive 20 minutes back. 
just for my babies who are hungry. Um, yeah, as per the 1964 Civil Rights Act, I cannot be discriminated against. Um, I do have a right to be able to breathe O2, not CO2, and I am being discriminated against right now at a store. So, so what, what are, you, are you calling to report something then? Uh, yes, that I am not being allowed into the store because I'm being discriminated against. Because you would not like to wear a mask? Discriminated against. And what store are you at? Um, it's called Bones and Scones, and I'm being discriminated against because I'm being told I need to wear a mask. And scones. Okay. All right. So <laughs> let's start here with, with the sign. She said, as, as per, which, you know, in our culture, we use that to check the, 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 the co worker. Uh -huh. As per my last email. Uh huh. Becky Karen Kathy here said, as per the 1964 Voting Rights Act, I am being discriminated against because they will not let me into the store because I won't wear a mask. She made it a point to say that the person taking her temperature was standing 7,000 feet away from her. Ma'am, if you're a raging, walking coronavirus, I would stand 8,000 feet away from you. The, the 1964 Voting Rights Act does not give you the right to be an asshole. The 1964 Civil Rights Act did not apply to your ass. It applied to people who look like me. It applied to segregation in public places. It did not apply to your dumb ass who doesn't want to wear a mask to get your food for you and your kids. It does not allow or permit you to call 911 on some dumb shit saying, I am entitled to breathe oxygen and not carbon dioxide. First of all, there is no scientific proof, evidence, or even conspiracy theories that say wearing a mask forces you to breathe in CO2 and not oxygen. That is the dumbest shit I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> and to incite- For you, first of all, for you to bring your ass- For food? Oh girl, sit your ass down. You had the right one though. You had the, you you had had the right, right one. And I think that we keep seeing these things on video and we keep seeing them. And I say all the time, right? Like you be getting the right ones. It doesn't happen to me. I talk about it. <laughs> it to me. I, I talk about I'll it. I'll be waiting and ready. Please. People send me the videos, but this doesn't happen to me. And then you got to be lucky. You're fortunate that it doesn't happen to people like my brother, right? Like it. That's a different phone call. That's a whole different phone call, ma'am. Yeah. Somebody's calling 911 for you. Period. <laughs> it's totally different. They the 1964 Civil Rights Act is a landmark civil rights and labor law. Labor law, right? First of all, wrong law, ma'am. You're citing the wrong law. Because th this one specifically, the Civil Rights Act is not the Voting Act of 1965. This one is literally about people and their civil rights and their civil rights in the workplace. It there is outlaws discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, natural origin, and later sexual orientation was added into that. There is no law to protect your dumb ass for not wearing a mask during a pandemic. Where are your masks? Where are your masks? Wear your mask. Here, okay. We're not um, asking for a lot. That said, because laws like this were passed, and I know that we are, it's very frustrating to watch what's happening in the country. It's very frustrating to see it, it's still early, <laughs> early voting. And the lines are already atrocious. And for those of you in Southern states, in red states, in these places that have literally done their best to suppress the vote in the year 2020, stick it out. You took your ass out there, stand in line, vote, okay? Vote. It's too, like, just do it. We, what we saw uh, Governor Greg Abbott in Texas, the counties had, they had uh, for early voting and for those that had requested absentee ballots, 
the counties, uh, various counties had opened up multiple areas where drop boxes were available for uh, the citizens to go and drop their, their uh, absentee ballots into the uh, drop boxes. The governor passed last Thursday legislation limiting the drop boxes to one per county. This is voter suppression in your face, okay? It, it really, I re my real word there is in your in face. It's in your face. It's right there. Harris County, where Houston, Texas is located, for example, had 13 drop boxes because it's over 1,000 square miles, which means that it's bigger than some states. Thinking. With one drop box, people that, and I, I'm going to really drive this one home. And, I, I, and I'm, I'm going to say something that I won't regret. <laughs> For people going one way to get to that one drop box, some of people had to drive over two hours one way to go cast their vote. Why in the, why in the hell would you do that for the elderly during the time of a serious pandemic? When your bitch ass is disabled in a fucking wheelchair. Like that part, I just like, are you that nervous, that scared that people are actually going to go vote? Yes. The governor of Texas sits in a wheelchair. He's been in a wheelchair. The man is literally physically disabled with nimble and unusable legs. They're really scared, like really scared. Biden is polling up and Trump is unraveling and not in his regular Trump ways. Like it's, it's bigly bad. Before we get to him and his bitch ass, let's talk about these lines in Georgia right now. Okay, so I have, and I, I didn't get it to the people in time. So I think I have just some information. I know I got messages from people in Cobb County that have been standing in line for over three hours. Um, too early vote. Right. So let me give a little bit of context about why so many people are early voting here. Uh, There's a couple of things. One, Georgia. Let's just go ahead and lay that out as the foundation. Georgia. We are king here of voter suppression and not having enough voter protection here. It's this is the state where you got to the polls during certain elections and they said, oh, we don't have the chargers for our voting machines or only two out of the six are working or, oh, the poll workers didn't show up today. So we can only let certain people in or, oh, you've came you've come to the wrong polling poll voting location for you. You actually need to go to the one that's 20 miles down the road or, oh, we're out of um paper ballots or we're out of whatever, whatever materials are needed. So that's number one, king of voter suppression. Number two, they have been running ads here in Georgia about our secretary of state and all that he's doing to protect the election and all of the moves that he's making and so forth and so on. He's still in bed with governor asshat who stole the governorship, the gubernatorial race. Um, so that's number two. Number three, they are still working to confirm actual election voting, poll voting locations for actual election day. They have clustered quite a few polling places and put them at the Georgia Dome. We don't know what all locations are being consolidated into that one location yet. And we don't know how many switch ups they're going to do on actual voting day. So people are trying to, the messaging here from all of the text messages, emails, phone calls, phone trees, everything that we're getting down here has been saying, go early vote because they're gonna try some BS on election day. So the best bet is to go vote early. Now, I don't think that we were anticipating these lines because every organization I know and am partnered with has been prepping for election day. So nobody, to my knowledge, was prepared to go out there when early voting started today because we weren't expecting seven hour lines today. So we were not prepared. And let's, let, me, let, me, let me bring some clarity to that. This is day one. This is day one. 
So a lot of people went out day one because it's certain dates in in the state. It's certain dates according to your jurisdiction. So it may be these three polling through these three places to vote this week, another three places next week. So you have to look at the dates and the times and catch the one closest to you or one five miles away. And so it's very tricky and you gotta be strategic when you're gonna go early vote. So that's why a lot of people were trying to go early vote today. Um, but we just, I don't think we were prepared for the masses to come today. Um, I wanna say this, I think I, I think that we have to be prepared for the attack, right? And, and, and when I say attack, they're not coming for you yet, right? They're not coming. Right. But on, on, on voting day, Donald Trump has already enraged and confirmed that his base needs to go stand at the polls and poll watch. Well, in the olden days when they did that, the only reason that people would be there watching the polls to make sure that people don't cheat is to intimidate other Americans. So what happens when there's a poll watcher there and you are an immigrant or ICE has been to your house, you're a little concerned to go to, to the polls. They want you to stay home. If you know that you've been in some trouble or there's a warrant for your arrest or something like this, and you the common American may think that you should be voting if there's a warrant for your arrest, but in Georgia, you can have a warrant for your arrest for a speeding ticket that you forgot about. So there are a number of things that can happen to people when they show up to the polls. There are a number of things that we know, documented history of this country, that things happen to black and brown people. Right. Disproportionately. What I think you need to be watchful for, it's scrolling on, on the bottom of, of the screen right now. Iwillvote.com will tell you exactly when and where you can vote. If you have not registered now, it's probably too late. This is not like, and a lot of people, we don't say it like this. Our teachers don't say it like this. This is not like, you know, you're late with Verizon and you call them to see if you can get a credit and an extension or a promise to pay. You can't do that. You can't promise to vote. It's too late. But you need to get registered so you vote for the next election. What we are seeing across the country is even people in places of faith. There was a pastor in California they put a drop, a voting drop box in front of his church. The yeah. pastor. The pastor put the drop box after having Republican candidates coming to his pulpit and speaking. Um, and now he's mansplaining. We took it down. But we don't know. It was up for more than four days. We don't know people that saw that drop box location. Do not vote in random boxes. Do not, I, I, you can put it in the U.S. mail. I'm not supposed to say that it's not going to get there. Take it to the your local county elections office, whether that's where, wherever it's located, and drop your vote there. It needs to, it needs to be cast or vote on, on, vote early, show up for a, election day. It's something that you got to do. We can't keep putting it to the side. It's, it's just crazy. It, it's it's crazy. What we we have some numbers back to um, over yeah. eight million people have already um, casted their votes. So as of uh, six fifteen p.m. here, some one hundred and ten thousand people have cast ballots across the state, breaking our previous record of ninety thousand voters. And people are still in line. Um, they have made it so that as long as you are in line before the polling location closes, you will be permitted to vote. If you are not permitted to vote and you are in line by the time the poll closes, then you can contact a polling protection uh, hotline or, hell, message me and I'll contact them for you. Um, we got you. I promise. We got you. Here, there is still time also for you to work the polls if you want to do that. And many of you in uh, some of y'all ain't worked since March and you need a little job and you need some little money. Don't let these old people be out there catching the wrong. OK, take your ass to the polls, work to help people. You know, old people have problems with machines, you know, and pressing, pressing, pressing the right buttons and putting the card in. Go help, go help, go register and, and be at these polls when these. Do it. Do it. Because, okay. And Alex, you know what I'm about to say? He's got to go. He's I, wish gotta, I, had, I wish you had you. I, and you just said it, but he he's got to go. Um, 
Yeah, he's he's he's, he's, he's got to go. I don't I, think that there's there's none of the integrity that I can maintain as a human. You and I, I read this post to, today. Uh, there's you have no humanity and no decency if you still support Donald Trump. None. I don't trust. And, and, and people feel like, oh, well, no, my politics. No, 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 no. It's not about politics. No, it's not about politics. You. He's not a decent human being. Period. He's not a decent. Do we have his tweets? Because this is a good segue. I really don't really want to talk about his bitch ass, but um, you know, I'm about his tweets where he the tweets are like tweets from a five year old, and I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand this. I will never understand this. But I am, I am going to take issue with it as um, you know, a, 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 a huge proponent and user of Twitter. His misuse of the platform, aside from the flagrant insults, bigotry, and hateful thing, hate speech that he uses on the platform. Um, today he was tweeting like Kanye West. Very erratic, very confusing, very, you know, like Kanye just says things, right? And there was a time, I remember, you know, in my early DJ years and, and loving Kanye's music, we, these are just sick, sickening. Um, I would, you know, people were like, Kanye's a stable, he's a stable genius. Donald Trump himself has called himself a stable genius. But let's take a look at some of these tweets, okay? Um, they were there and now they're not. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Biden is losing in Florida. Only fake polls show otherwise. Bad for health care. He thinks he's running for the Senate. Forgot Mitt Romney's name and where he was. Okay. Donald. Okay. These are the these are some of the tweets. These ones right here, though, these, these, they're gone again. But those, my nephew is three. I was just about to say, my nephew could tweet better than this. My nephew is three, and he writes better than this, okay? Um, we'll have them back in a second. Here they are. Donald Trump. He has more cool. um, Donald Trump talking about the state of Illinois. Uh, he says, Illinois has no place to go. Sad, isn't it? Vote Trump. New York has gone to hell. Vote Trump. California is going to hell. Vote Trump. Who are you talking to? This was during like, the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee hearing, by the way. A, a very serious hearing that's happening for our country was happening at the moment. Donald, who are you talking to? And what are you talking about? Can we pull those back up, Tiff? Because there's something I want I, I want to talk about the stable genius one more time. You do you see these tweets? For those of you that know Twitter, ask me why this asshole has retweeted himself. <laughs> Oh my God. Like, what is going on? And, and look, what are you on? What is the medication? What is it? And why are you retweeting yourself? It's one of those, you know, experimental coronavirus medications. For the millions like, of people. For COVID. For the millions you know, of people on Twitter that use Twitter every day, you've lost credibility because you're retweeting yourself. I literally believe that only psychopaths retweet themselves. It's like the same people that like their own photos on Instagram. I mean, you like their own statuses on Facebook. That's what I'm saying. You, you, there's something wrong with you. You can retweet yourself if you're retweeting yourself to add something to your uh, an original post or point. Or you could respond to yourself so that it becomes a thread. A thread. I mean, that's what most people do. But, you know, to each his own, whatever floats your boat, whatever method makes you happy. But, I, I like, I have, does coronavirus eat your brain cells? I, I haven't heard of that side of it. My, my, my problem with this whole virus is, and, and this is me being honest, is the faith that I had in this country. Mm -hmm. And this is me having to admit that I was wrong and dead wrong, right? Like, I took it seriously, and I reported it seriously, and we covered it seriously. But I, something in the back of my mind was like, this is America. 
ain't nothing gonna happen. We gonna keep rolling. We gonna keep rolling. We got about thirty days, but no, and we still don't know. Like people have different symptoms. Um, Atlanta seems to be immune. The clubs are wide open. I will not. I, Do I, not get me started. I don't. I mean, y'all are just on a whole nother level. But it seems that y'all are immune because I don't see people coming down with the left and right. I, New York people still dropping like flies, right? And now there's a resurgence again. I think that. You know, we don't know what it does. We don't know what they gave him. He says they gave him everything. He also said he's cured. He also said that the military was going to distribute the cure. I don't know what he sniffed that day, but I have never known that the military was going to be driving around cures. I just don't know that even we do that in America. I don't know how that works. And where do they go? Do they stop house by house? Do tanks come down the street? But I'm, com I'm just really confused. I'm really confused. Um, and nobody prepared us for this. Like, we knew, like, and I really Which hate part, that. Or a pandemic? Or a pandemic? The, no, I'm talking about for him. Like, no, I, I think that we read things in historical context and that while they talked about certain presidents and they tried to make them something, they tried, they made Nixon the worst. But I can't wait. I may, I may like, I may, you know, we're 27 in education, so we'll still have textbooks in 20 years while the kids in Japan, go, they actually go put virtual reality heads, headsets on and they go visit places in history class. We'll still have McGraw-Hill and Houghton Mifflin, but I'm going to go and get me a book in about 20 years from now because I want to see how this history is written. I really want to. I I literally need to see that. I, need to I just saw a question that I want to ask you. Um, I've also seen a, a friend of mine uh, on another show. They were, they just did a series on this as well. Black people, what do you, we what do we do? Because first of all, and I also want to I also want to bring something else um, up that I, I, I was we were off the air last week. We we're gonna be raw all week well, going forward until I, like I said at the beginning of this show today. We I, I just can't do the formal thing. We got to be raw until we can't be raw no more. I just got shit to say, shit that you need to hear, shit that you need to share. Um, I want to talk to black people really quick that were so moved by your companies and these people doing all of these things in, in, in June when Black Lives Matter took over Gay Pride Month. Because if you remember if you remember 2019, in June 2019, every company, every church, everything turned into the rainbow. The same thing happened this year in June. It happened again because America loves a cause. They love to get behind it. They canceled all these shows. They canceled all these people. They canceled all these initiatives. Companies want Juneteenth to be a federal holiday, which I would hate that because then white people start dressing up as, as Aunt Mama and shit, and I'm just have to knock somebody the fuck out. But, but that aside, we're not paying attention. Cops, which canceled itself after 30 years has quietly restarted production has Qu quietly because they only stopped because it was a moment it was a mood right which is exactly what we said when the moment was happening i wasn't moved at all at all what happens i'm not standing with these corporations i didn't have no corporations on my show i don't want to talk to no damn ceo i don't believe in diversity and inclusion because you don't you only want us at the table to be there so that people can see us that's not a seat that's not a vote that's not an opinion that's not any movement and we're still not moving so with that that said these people don't care the question that people have what do we do if this man is reelected? or if he contests the election, or, you know, they declare war. And I've said to you, I have not said this on a public platform, but let me just say it now. I, 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 I admonish the ancestors for the work that they did. I never say that nonsense out of my mouth that I am not my ancestors. Right. But in this case, I will say it because I'm not gonna stay here and fight these people for equality that should have been here when there's other places that will accept my black ass. Instead of tolerate me. I, I told you, I told my aunt today, it was one of my aunt's birthdays today and I wish her a happy birthday and a, a good day in French. And one of my other aunts texted me and said, show off. And I said, look, I've got to practice my French in case I need to immigrate. That's immigrate with an E, immigrate to Canada because I, I, I can't, I physically, Cannot. I will finish this little grad school program program that I'm in now, and I will get my PhD somewhere else, or I won't. 
but I cannot stay here for. I them. really don't care about anything that's going on here. Like I'm making moves, no. I will make moves wherever I go. I think that's just the resiliency that the ancestors put inside of me. I do think that we should be active and vocal, right? But I think there comes right. a certain point to where you cannot spend your and, and our. And that's what I'm saying. We are not them. Our ancestors did. Okay, they took risks and they paid price. They paid the price for so many people and did so many things. And then, you know, people are out here. Well, if he did, just stop playing the victim, I don't play the victim. I don't ever, I, I've never benefited from affirmative action. I have never, like, I, I just, I don't, I don't play the victim in those ways. But I do know that people need those programs. I know that affirmative action is, is absolutely needed because I know that. It, there is inherent bias Period. that happens, not just in schools or workplaces, but everywhere. And it happens and you don't even realize it. The system has you believing that when you see a black body, you should be afraid. Right. And so the things that I, I think I said this to you before, you know, I think, I believe in teaching people in real time, right? I get into an elevator with a white woman, nothing scares me more than that. So I go berserk. <laughs> I lose my mind. I go pressing all the buttons. I lose, I lose my mind because we could get to the bottom of that elevator and she could say anything and people would believe that something happened between me and her in that elevator. So I will go, I will go crazy, get out. She's, is everything okay? I can't be in the elevator with you. This doesn't, this doesn't, that's not black supremacy. That's not reverse racism. That is me teaching you a lesson. Each one teach that's protection because you're going to leave that elevator. And she's going to tell people that she had an encounter where a black man didn't want to be in the elevator with her. Well, damn, I wonder how that feels. I actually had, I was getting on an elevator not long ago. This was maybe two years ago. And as I was standing in the elevator, a white man came up to the elevator door, saw me in it and decided not to get in. I said, I didn't want your white ass in here with me anyway. He said, well, it wasn't that. It was. And I just said, God bless. Let the elevator doors close. I mean, the only way way to get the elevator with me. The only way it works is right, is if you you walk to the other side of the street. Right. Right. I lock my doors when a white man walks by my car. I but it's because of that inherent bias. Because what what makes you think that you should be more afraid of me than I should be of you? You're killing us. This unarmed. This you are killing us for breathing. You are it's killing only us this. For it's this and this and only this. You're killing us for jogging. You're killing us for standing outside of doors. You're killing us for <laughs> paying for things. You're killing us for being in a Wendy's drive-through. You're killing us for breathing. You're killing us for living. You're killing us for being in our own homes, minding our own damn black business. So what makes you think? That, and I said this in a group uh, discussion not too long ago. You are afraid because power equals superiority equals whatever. And you just think that if we really got into power and got hold of it, then we would actually be able to oppress you. And my God, y'all better be lucky we are out for equality and not revenge. But the way that I'm hearing white supremacists prepare for war, either way, win or lose, these are threats. These are not empty threats. These are not empty promises. These people are preparing for war. And I I don't want to do this with y'all. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's a, that's a, you got to the point that I'm trying to make. I don't want to be in a war for rights that are already written. Right. Period. Just leave, like, just just stop. Just stop, right? This is not an interest. I, we don't have an interest in taking over. No. And, 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 and his, history will show you that was never us. We Y'all don't have a that good anyway. It just, but <sighs> we, can, we can leave this, like I said, we're raw all week. I'll, I'll have tip back as much as possible. Um, <laughs> the I want to keep going. I wanted to talk about Trump's uh, COVID fiasco, but I don't want to really delay the time on that. Um, he he is a liar. Okay, now am I saying that he lied about having COVID? Absolutely not. 
No, but he's, he's a liar not. about everything else. Okay, he's not cured. He was never cured. He puts people at risk. He drove around and waved at people like he was a damn dictator in a car. Like that's the moment that as Secret Service, I would have threw the keys at him, saying, "Bro, you're on your own. You're on your own." You think I'm getting enough? I forget that the debate this week was canceled because he threw a hissy fit and said he wasn't going to show up to a virtual. But debate. while other people won't call him on it, I will because he's the one that's saying that. Uh, Joe Biden was hiding in his basement. Well, guess who's hiding now? Who was hiding all weekend? He's the one that said Joe Biden would not show up to another debate, but who bitched out because he doesn't want to follow rules? Like, you want to debate and argue and lie and make and throw out conspiracy theories, and you think you should have a platform to do that. And that is what you had in 2016. Everybody is hip to your game now, right? So you have your state TV, Fox News, that is going to perpetuate all of your lies. Like, and you just lie, 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 and nobody holds you accountable, but everybody else gets held accountable, right? So that's what I want people to know. You are not Donald Trump. Doctors do not have a cure for your body like they had for Donald Trump's. They don't. They're not trying to fix you. There's not a sense of urgency. You're not running a country. I don't care what you do. You are not Donald Trump. You also, your lies can't get you out of everything. You can't just be lying like Donald Trump and think, like, you just can't do that. Right. That's 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 what we'll talk about, Donald Trump. I mean, I'm, I'm done with that. I want to talk about this this thing. I think this is huge. Um, there is uh, so Killer Mike. Many of you know Killer Mike. You're familiar with Killer Mike. If you hear the name Killer Mike and you're still scared, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Michael Render is his government. Um, oh my God. That's his government name. Michael Render. Michael Santiago. <laughs> Render. Okay. Um, joined together with uh, the CEO of Bounce TV. Uh, his name is escaping me at the moment. Um, okay. Y'all know about Bounce TV. All the old shows was on there before Netflix started bringing them back. Right. So what's um, on there? <laughs> he said what? I said, so what's on there now? Um... Man, what does that mean? I'm your, your classic millennial. I don't have cable, so I can actually turn on my little digital antenna and see what's on. Y'all might as well start getting it because those streaming services add up and it all costs the same. It all costs the same. We, we did not win at all. No. Um, but I don't. I don't know the man's name. It's escaping me and it's not coming to me. But anyway, the Bounce TV CEO Ryan, Ryan Glover. Ryan Glover. Ooh. Glover. Ryan Glover. Not Donald Glover. That's Gambino, Ryan Glover. Okay. And not Danny Glover. Oh, Ryan Glover. Ryan Glover, Glover President, it. Jonathan Katz. Right. Um, and Andrew Young, Ambassador Andrew Young from Georgia, came together to create a digital black bank. Now, um, a lot of you have black, uh, have digital banks already. Uh, whether it's Simple or Chime, whatever bank that you have, it doesn't have a, a brick and mortar location. You bank online. Um, I think a lot of people I have heard have been uh, frustrated with black banks because they can't do things online re like regular banks or they're just too, you know, you know. It's like they Baptist church just, uh, as a banking experience. The Bible says say that you can only deposit this much right. on this day. Like, yeah. <laughs> the bylaw says that you need to get your password sent to you in the mail for in online the US, banking. Yes. Yeah, no. The bylaw says that you cannot log into your online banking in Puerto Rico because it's not the continental, you, you know, like there's really real issues. So this is this is actually pretty cool. Um it's called Greenwood. It's named after uh Black Wall Street. That's what um, I'm doing. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, you cannot deposit just yet. There is a, a huge waiting list. There are oh, there are thousands of people on the wait list already. So they're going to do some really cool things that I really like. They are planning to pay it forward. So um, they have these three initiatives happening uh, immediately. Feed a family. Feed five meals to a family through Gooder when you create an account. Um, so you'll be able to help feed families. Uh, you can donate to nonprofits. You can give to UNCF and uh, the NAACP through spare change roundups. Um, that's cool. I mean, I don't know really who has spare change right now, but 
They're also giving small business grants uh, $10,000 every month to a black or Latinx business, which I can get with that. For that reason, I will open up a deposit account. Um, right, and I, th I think that's, that's really dope. You can sign up at bankgreenwood.com. They have some features, and I got to be honest, you know, like I can't, I, while I support it, there are things that stop me in my tracks. And every time I see two-day early pay, Black people, we don't need that, okay? Stop. I know it's your money. I do I do understand I do. I do understand that. But two-day early pay, that is that mentality, like, like oh I just I'm gonna get a payday loan just until I get paid no just wait till the, the wait so you can budget right yeah wait. it really puts me in the mindset of the rush card and that is what I don't want I do not want to say that this is the same thing because it's not you can get a savings and a spending account there's yeah. Apple and Android Pay I don't know wait, if the rush that, card is wait is that savings and a spending account yeah that's what it's called and I don't know if we're changing the language because. Gen Z does not even know what checks are. Um, okay. Peer-to-peer -peer transfers, so your Zelle, you know, all that. Uh, mobile deposit, community reinvestment. They have a global ATM network. They do not have fees, though. That's a, that, no hidden fees. So there's no overdraft fees. I With a global ATM network, I'm sure there's, like, ATMs that you can use. Right. And then, of course, there'll probably be fees. And then two-day early pay. Look into that Greenwood Bank. Um, Andy Young, Ryan Glover, and uh, Michael Render, aka Killer Mike, they did the damn thing, um, and it's a digital bank, so you can you don't you can be anywhere and sign up for an account. Right now, you can sign up for the wait list. Tell them a muted nation sent you. That's it. Okay. Um. Did we go over the Senate Judiciary Committee? We didn't. Because I know that people aren't going to watch, but Let's, I, I, I want to say this, and I want you to—I want you to explain it. I want—I want—I want you to know that um, as we look, you should look at these parties objectively. Hey, Amy. Um, hey, Amy. Honorable Amy. Handmade Amy. All right. That's what they were called when she was in the. Was it? Was it called the People of Praise? Athletes, People of Praise. The what? Catholics, people of praise. Well, I thought you said backwoods, people of praise. I'm about to say. I mean, but um, so I think I don't think I think when it comes to faith and government, I think that 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 this country is so hypocritical. Um, I think that uh, like while America cites that it's a Christian nation, in the same survey, like seventy five percent of people haven't been to church in over a year. Not that you have to go to church to be a Christian. Not that I care, right? Um, I, think, I think that uh, the Republicans really want Democrats to attack her on religion so that they can be soiled. And what was interesting about it, I'm gonna let you talk about it, but what was interesting today is that Republicans came to the fight hoping that Democrats were gonna say something about her religion and they didn't touch it. They didn't touch it. Uh, but Republicans so talked about her religion the yep. entire time. Yep. Like the entire time. They say yep. that they, 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 they were like, well, Democrats are going to attack you. They're going to attack, like, they're not. Not one Democrat touched her religion, religious past, religious beliefs. And so it was funny to sit there and listen to all of them prep her for what they were going to attack her on, and they just never did. I mean, was there anything really to attack? I mean, not today. So if you missed it today, there were 22 statements from, tw there were statements from 22 senators that each got 10 minutes, which Trump's dumbass went on Twitter and said the Republicans were being very nice and considerate, giving the Dems time to speak. No ass hat that's actually in the rules for committee hearings. So each senator got 10 minutes to basically say their piece. And what the Dems did do, first of all, all the Republicans sang Amy's praises about, you know, who she is. You have a beautiful family. A beautiful family. I'm so glad you brought your family here with you today. I'm happy to see all of your children. They didn't apologize for affecting her family with COVID. No. So go ahead. Lindsey Graham actually said, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask. 
until the CDC requires it, because I think that we did a really good job here keeping everyone safe for this here committee hearing. And I just think that it's ridiculous to try and say that we need all need to all wear a mask. I think that we've done our due diligence here. Uh, so they talked about that. They talked about, you know, her uh, judicial background, legislation, back, latest background, all of that other good stuff. The Democrats, what they did do was talk about the fact that she wants to get rid of Obamacare. And so the people who were there and the Wait, can I say something? Because I want yeah. you to go at this point. You've been watching for a little bit. Hit share again. OK, because you need to bring your black asses in here to hear this. OK, because you need to know, because some of you are on Obamacare and you don't even know it. Um, Obamacare is helping you or something, uh, an affliction that you were born with, um, or you're, you are receiving a benefit right now. Those of you, I'm gonna talk to the sex community, PrEP. Those of you that are getting, <laughs> you have access to all of these things right now because of Obamacare, take it away. So um, what the people who, the senators who were in the room and the senators, some were actually online or virtual, um, they had posters of stories of families who have COVID, who have gone through, have pre-existing conditions, who have been in hospitals. One little boy's story, um, the family was hit after I think he was in the hospital for three or four days and his bills got up to a million dollars. Um, so what they did talk about was that now one Republican senator, senator I believe it was Mike Lee, uh, fixed his lips and he wasn't the only one, but fixed his lips to say, I'm not sure why they are discussing policy because it's not as if you're going to be deciding on policy. Let me be very clear, that couldn't be further from the truth. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. So while they don't necessarily write legislation, they do make decisions that can impact us for generations to come. So the big deal about Supreme Court being nominated and this hearing happening, which was another thing that the Democrats uh, have been trying to fight against, is because we are 20 days out from election and they're trying to get Amy in so that it is a six to three vote power on the Republican and conservative side. This means that Obamacare, Roe v. Wade, and other important legislation that has passed is up for grabs, basically. They can rule against it, for it, or anything that they want to do. So this is not just a decision about the next 20 days or the next presidential election. It's not like they will nominate and confirm Amy, and then if another president is nominated, then they'll get to nominate another. That's not how that works. Once Amy is confirmed, if Amy is confirmed, she will be there until she dies or retires. That's That's it. So the big deal about Dems trying to make it so that she does not get confirmed is because we believe, or they believe, or at least touting, touting the belief that the American people should have the right to get through the presidential election, and then whomever wins the next election will get the power to, to nominate and confirm the next SCOTUS. Now, Amy is a conservative. We are not going to attack her religious beliefs. They are her own. We'll leave that there. Where I'm not going to attack conservatives. I'm not even going to attack conservatives. But I do have a problem with the rush in this process. And what one of the senators said today is there, there are things that are missing. They don't know enough. This is a very rushed process. So the schedule for this week. Today was introductions. The 22 senators gave their basically opening statements before the hearings begin. And then after a small break, uh, the Honorable Amy uh, gave her opening statement of sorts. She talked about her kids, some of which are from Haiti, all of that. Then I hate to interject. I do have something to say about all these white people who got the black kids, but not this show. That's a whole other show. So Tuesday, tomorrow. Tuesday will begin the question and answer session. This is where you may see the clips on MSNBC, CNN, Black News Alerts, Off FM, my page, Alex's page, where the senators are asking the questions. And that's normally where you get the sound bites and clips that are on different news shows. 
That begins tomorrow. The There will be multiple rounds. The first round senators will get 30 minutes each and the Q&A will uh, go into Wednesday. Each senator on Wednesday will get 20 minutes for a second round, 10 minutes for any round that are after the second round. Thursday will be the final day of the hearing, expected to be the final day of the hearing, and that is when witnesses will come in. So, for example, we'll take Kavanaugh, for for example, the last one that was confirmed. Um, that is when a lot of the women came in and testified against him. Uh, same for when uh, Clarence Thomas was up. If you haven't seen confirmation, now's a great time to watch it. It's on HBO. But it kind of takes you through the process of what this looks like, what the Q&A looks like, what the witness testimony can look like, how the votes work. Um, so that's a, a really good documentary, film, whatever you want to call it, to watch. But that is the schedule. So today was pretty boring with introductory statements, opening statements. Republicans gave her glowing praise. Uh, Dem said, you're attacking health care. Tomorrow's the Q&A. That is where I'm going to be very interested to hear what is going on, what's asked, what uh, policy questions are asked. To my knowledge, there are not too many limitations on what they can ask. So they will ask about her policies. They will ask about her positions. They will ask about her previous records as a judge. A Supreme Court judge is higher than a federal judge. I mean, than a uh, local judge or a local state Supreme Court nomination. So this is not just some random confirmation hearing, nomination, and vote. This is really, truly important because it can impact legislation for generations to come. That is why this is a big deal. That is why you should be watching. And that is why the Dems have been fighting against this nomination and this confirmation hearing. Y'all still ain't gonna watch, but we'll be watching. And we will bring you the update. I want I want to cover some of these things that are really important because you don't understand what the ACA, Affordable Care Act, uh, and we talk about it a lot on the nation, but we do not. You a lot of you don't understand what it covers. Uh, so as an adult, it, it covers um, aneurysm screening for men, alcohol misuse screening and counseling, uh, misuse of aspirin, blood pressure screening cholesterol screening like these are preventive services that is are covered like they're no charge to you um if you're covered by an insurance plan in the united states because of the aca prior to the aca that was passed in march 2010 you paid for these services um cancer screenings depression screenings diabetes type 2 screening diet counseling fat asses come on um, fall, oh I mean, skinny asses too. Fall, false oh prevention, God. hepatitis B screening, hepatitis C screening, HIV screening, immunizations, all of these things, right? Women, lots of things are covered for you as a woman. Anemia wow. screening, <laughs> breastfeeding, comprehensive support and counseling. Your Contraception. Angry. That's a huge one right now that I know that it frustrates a lot of people of faith. You know, stop having sex. Well, listen. What? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and so all of, all of these screenings, all of these things that, that this act has done. And the killer part is, because Tiff didn't hit this. I didn't know she didn't hit it, but she wants me to be ratchet and cover it here, right? <laughs> Republicans, there is a lawsuit scheduled to be heard by the Supreme Court 10 days after the election. Watch my big ass lips. 10 days after the election, there will be a lawsuit as the Trump administration tries to rip the AC out of the hands of Americans. It's a very popular thing, so this is not a good thing for them, right? That's another reason why they want to rush this nomination through so that she can be confirmed to be there to when the Supreme Court hears it. Uh, and that will also balance the court because after the notorious RBG has passed away, there's only eight justices. She would be an associate justice and make her number nine. Um, they want to rip it out. And you're like, well, maybe they have something better. No, I don't. Listen, listen to me. These people want to take health care away from Americans during a global pandemic. And they don't have a plan. They keep saying they have a plan. I admonish you to do the research. If you do the research, because I know there are people that listen, you're listening uh, live on the radio or 
you watch this and you're like, Alex, you were wrong on this. You try to fact check me and send me, I see your little emails. You can't find a plan because there isn't one. He actually said that in the last debate. He said, when it's done, I will share it. Right. Or that means after four years of you being in office and you trying to disseminate ACA, Obamacare, you still don't have four a Four years for him. Tiff, ACA was passed in 2010. It's been the law of the land, which is why I don't think why there's really, there's really no legal precedent for the Supreme Court to strike it down, honestly. But for the last 10 years, Republicans still have had no plan at all. No. Like they've had no plan. They have no idea what's going on. I, I just right. don't understand like where they are, why they don't have a plan, why there has not been a plan, while nothing like, I, I don't get it. I don't I, get it. They have no plan. They have no, they have, no, and so to me, that's why people think they're heartless. That's why people think that they are conscienceless, right? Because if you poll the, before the, the pre-Trump era, uh, Republicans were well off. They had their own private insurance. They did not want the ACA or Obamacare to be the law of the land that they had to have it, which they don't have to have it right now. But Republican states also did not buy into the exchanges. And so the prices were soaring really because of America, right? We can't agree that we are, our citizens need health care. Right. Which is ridiculous because we are one of the highest countries on the obesity scale. We have terrible- We're bad as hell. I was trying to find a nice way to say it. Let me stop saying that because I get hate mail <laughs> in real life. We are unhealthy in multiple ways than one. And again, this is not just about eating habits or exercise or anything like that. But our it's not about eating Big Macs and fish fillets and drinking twelve diet coke. That's stuff the ass hat eats. But this is about even our air quality, our water. We we don't cities don't have clean water. Our crops are dying. And then you pull us out of the Paris Accords, which again goes back to environmental work and justice. And you are wondering why we are dying at alarming rates from illnesses, diseases. And again, I, I said this to someone the other day, and I'm going to continue to say this. This vaccine that they are working on is not going to work for most people. It, the vaccine that they are working on, how vaccines work, they are trying to essentially make a key for a doorknob that is old. The, the key that they are building is for a doorknob that came around last year. We are one or two strains from the original strain of COVID-19. So this is a big freaking deal. You're hurting a lot of hearts right now. So I'm sorry. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I don't know how else to say that. And if you listen to the scientists and you watch the doctors, one, wear your mask. Two, vaccines are given Vaccine is essentially a dead version of a virus. So that is why if you get the flu vaccine, nine times out of 10, you're going to get the flu. Because no, I think nine is a little high. No, it's not. That's a, that's a, because I mean, that's not, that's, that has to be a little high. Fact check me. I mean. Nine times out of 10, you will get the flu. It may not be as bad as the full flu, but you will get sick nine times out of 10 because what they are doing is let's say you get a flu vaccine in 2020. You're getting a vaccine that was created for a 2019 strain. If that strain has mutated, changed, shifted in any way, that key is not going to fit that doorknob. And that is what they're doing with COVID-19. You are going to get a 2020, 2021 version of a vaccine when we may have a new strain tomorrow. Well, I mean, I think the, the, the proof is in the pudding. COVID-19, right? It's 20. I don't know how else to say I'm going to check your flu, flu. I get the flu vaccine, but I need the flu vaccine. I've had some, I have, I've had my own health challenges. Your so system is special. You no, know, it is what it is. However, okay. it's you hard. know, there's a soiled history of vaccines. Oh, oh, there's a soiled history of experimentation on black bodies in this country. So there's a justifiable reason why black people are um, opposed to it at times. And if um, you think about that, Google Tuskegee experiments. The last thing that I wanted to cover, I thought we could do it in an hour, but this, let's just be honest with it. This is an hour, hour and a half show. It always is. So it just is, I don't know what I be thinking. It, just, it doesn't work. Um, Kanye West. This is 
the time, hit that share button one more time because Kanye West, bro, I just don't really, I, I really am sick of, I'm sick, I'm sick, I am sick of Kanye West. I am, I'm sick and tired, I'm sick and bothered, I am sick and over Kanye. I would really just like him to have a seat. And I would like to say that I was a for, I'm a former Kanye fan. I could still play some of his old music and rock with it. And I'm not, I don't believe in cancel culture. So as far as canceling Kanye, I just think that we should just mute him. <laughs> not mute him. Muzzle, is that a better word? No. Like he should not have the ability to speak to people in masses, right? I think, um, and I, I was talking to the team about this. There are people that have written Kanye off. Nobody, first of all, wants any advice from Kanye. About what? About marriage, no. about life, about no. sanity. No. I don't even think about, definitely not about fashion. You know, I, was, I don't know about these damn kids out here buying these orthopedic shoes that he sells and these Kmart clothes. And they don't even know. I like, I think he put Kmart out of business because he sells these plain ass size 3XL clothes draped over some orthopedic shoes, space space shoes. Like, I don't, I don't want them. I'm not interested. And why would you pay $600 for that in the name of fashion so you can put it on TikTok? It's dumb. It's really dumb. So, no, again, nobody wants marriage advice. <laughs> nobody wants life advice. Did he release his political ads today? He did. He released his first ad. We actually have it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say, you know, all this. that beautiful being um, future president West. And the, the problem is, we're going to talk about it. Let's run the ad and then we'll talk about it. When we play. I hate it. I hate it here. But I hate here. it here. Kanye, Kanye, Kanye 2020. America. What is America's destiny? What is best for our nation, our people? What is just? true justice. We have to think about all these things together as a people. To contemplate our future, to live up to our dream, we must have vision. We as a people will revive our nation's commitment to faith, to what our constitution calls the free exercise of religion, including, of course, prayer. Through prayer, faith can be restored. We as a people are called to a greater purpose than ourselves. We are not only a beacon to the world, but we should be servants to each other, to encourage each other, to help each other, to lift up each other, our fellow Americans, that we may all prosper together. We have to act on faith with the sure knowledge that we are pursuing the right goals and doing the right things. We will build a stronger country by building stronger families. Families are the building blocks of society, of a nation. By turning to faith, we will be the kind of nation, the kind of people God intends us to be. I am Kanye West, and I approve this message. First of all, high key, in your face, voter suppression. A vote for Kanye West is a vote for Donald Trump. Period. Okay? Gen Z, I want you to pull, pull, come closer to the screen and listen to me, okay? This is your uncle speaking. Come on. A vote for Kanye West is a vote for Donald Trump. Mm. Don't you take your little dumb ass down to them polls and write in Kanye West. Don't. Don't do that. Don't. Don't do it. Don't. Jesus. Please. Jesus. Like, in 2016, it was Harambe. I don't think people <laughs> remember Harambe, but people literally wrote in Harambe. It did. You I think wasted a full yeah. vote on Harambe or Hennessy. Let's be clear. The Republicans helped Kanye get on some of the ballots in the states where it was not too late and he did not miss the Donald day. Trump himself is standing okay. behind Kanye West. And if you don't want to accept that it's a plot, that he's a tool, that this is a ploy, did you look at him? Did you see him? There's nothing there. It's like a hollow shit. Like, He's like staring into space. We will pray together. We will be our brother's keeper. We will fight, fight for our fellow Americans. They don't even want to fight for black people that are being gunned down when they are unarmed. Who are you talking to? 
what the hell? Like, what? What are you? What are you? Who? Who are you talking to? He's talking to the person that loves Easy. He's talking to the little white kid that plays on his video games all day, by listens to old Kanye music, and imagines that he's gonna have a wife like Kim Kardashian when he looks like Doug Funny. Like that's literally when he who, looked like who? <laughs> Did you just say Doug Funny? <laughs> it's time to go. It is. It's time. We're done. But okay. here's the thing. Kanye is a no. Okay, we're not doing that. Kanye is a hell no. Let's no. let's not do this. Don't write in anybody and don't vote for Kanye. You either get Trump or Biden. That's it. It, a vote for anybody other than Biden is a vote for Trump. And like the meme I've been seeing, my sister shared it with me today. I've seen it a couple times. If you gonna vote for Trump, I'm gonna be like Biden. <laughs> okay. That does it for our Muted Nation Raw today. Uh, Tip now from Tip Talks has joined me and we will be raw, you know, until until I can stop because I can't suppress it, right? I gotta cuss you, I gotta cuss folks out, I gotta cuss you out, I gotta cuss myself out. We gotta be here. We gotta be raw. We gotta talk about things and change the culture. You know, or I gotta get the hell on. And that's 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 just here where where we are. Tiff, how do people keep up with you? You can keep up with me at Tiff Linnell anywhere, everywhere, Instagram. Twitter, Black Twitter to be exact, or dot com. I'm not on any of them other social networks. Don't look for me. Don't ask for me. If you see an account that ain't me, they a lie. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tiff Linnell. That's it. That's all. I don't know that that's my truth, but you can hit me on Twitter. That's where I respond. If you're watching, you'd be like, that's true, because I sent you a Facebook Messenger request. I don't even know how to get to that. Oh, no, um, email to also is a great way, but Twitter, you know, it's a you can go on Instagram. I do post things, but I just go on there to post. I'm being honest, guys. I just got to be honest with you. We're raw. I don't really be on Instagram like that unless I get a feeling. In the, and I'm a very selfish Instagrammer, so I'll be seeing five pictures, then I'm tired of fake people in their big-ass faces, so I just get off. So hit okay. me on Twitter. Um, that's the best way. I love to interact with you, and we can, we can do it. We can have fun there. Our Muted Nation Raw continues tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We will be back here. I'm going to woo Tiff to be to come back, and maybe some other people that want to cuss y'all out until we get this thing right, because we got to take this, some of this stuff back. Like, we are in control. If you missed any part of the show, it will re-air tomorrow, both the video, or you can listen, download the Boss FM radio app. Um, it will be live at 1 p.m., uh, well, it won't be live because it's going to be this, but it'll be there tomorrow <laughs> at, 1, at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Again, I believe this, right? Today is greater. Believe it, speak it, and live it. You have to make the choice to be great. Your situation is not your destination, so go and make it your motivation. Our Muted Nation returns tomorrow. I love you. I will see you then.